Bear in mind there was a purchase price of 250 so he was asking for the money. And as time started to tick on, I'm struggling a little bit financially myself and he needed some of the money back. Christian is phoning Richard saying, I need my money back. And he was like, oh, the house hasn't sold. Richard just didn't have it. Well, while Richard is saying he doesn't have the money to pay back his twin, he holds an extravagant wedding at Lake Garda in Italy. Richard's wedding was extraordinary. He'd got a castle book. I think he's told there were four separate venues. Richard bought himself uh, a new Cornsmith suit that cost him around £1,200. He spent an awful lot of money on himself to look like a bit. Richard denies that any of the money loaned from Christian was spent on the wedding. I spoke to Richard on the side when I got there and said, look, I know the financial situation between us isn't ideal, but I'm your best man, and I'm going to be your best man, so for now we'll put that to the side, and I'm here to make sure you have a great time. Because as far as I was concerned at that point, I didn't have the money, but it was no reason for me to think I wasn't going to get my money. If you can't afford it, then you shouldn't be having it, but he wanted his wedding, and he got his money. Richard has paid back £3,000, and Christian is hopeful that he will now get the remaining £52,000. Am I going debits with you? I'm financially strangled here, and he's not seeing that because he's still living off the back of that money and doing what he wants and enjoying his time. Yet I can't wake up and pay the tax on the car. It's difficult to see Christian knowing that his brother's got all his money and not helping him. I am begging and borrowing to make the And at that point, I was aware that now I'm going to have to fight it for it. Richard claims the twins' relationship broke down for multiple reasons, not just the loan. But Christian repeatedly tries to contact him for the money. I've gone to the property with a view to try and sort this out. I have knocked on the door a number of times. My intentions were wrong. As far as I'm concerned, there's nobody in the property. And I've actually wrote, quite simply, hey bro, I've popped round. We need to sort this out. Could you please give me a call? And I've put that through the letterbox. With Richard refusing to answer his calls and texts, Christian is at his wit's end. Threats that he would have me done for harassment if I kept assisting with him. And the reality was, I stopped assisting when he paid me back the money or let me know what's happening. But a few weeks later, the police knock on Christian's door and arrest him for harassment. I spent a night at the police station and I did receive a caution. And I think on advice as well at the time, there was a mention that you have to pursue this down the city routes. Once I decided to take Mitchell to call, all bets were off because I knew at that stage there was no going back and our relationship was never going to be the same again. Patricia Bennett and her brothers were raised in a small village of school in Scotland. In our family, there were three children, so his mum and dad and three children. I was the oldest, and a brother who was two years younger, and then another brother four years younger. We didn't have a lot of money when we were growing up. We were in a council house, and there were some owner-occupied houses, and it always seemed like a completely different world. You know, something you wanted to aspire to. because it takes you back to the memories that are associated with the most good times. And it does remind you days out and holidays and things. These were good times and things changed. Because I was the oldest, I took on that second mother role and I suppose I was a bit bossy at times really. I um, felt I had to keep everybody in order. Certainly my youngest brother Ian told the story to our children once where um, he had gone apple scrumping and they got caught and got sent home and I sent him back to apologise and he never let me forget that story. 
moved away from its 21 and moved 450 miles down to Reading. In the early 2000s, Ian had been married, but his marriage broke down and he moved back in with my mum then. By then, mum was starting to be a bit more frail, needed a bit of help, she had a bit of dementia, and Ian moved in to care for her. It's extremely difficult dealing with someone with dementia and I can understand absolutely how he found it really, really challenging. It was very difficult because, you know, we needed someone to be there for mum and we were too far away and yet it was really good to have someone that could see to things. When alarm bells started, Patricia. So we were having a bit of communication with mum and she was saying that she didn't like it at home. She found Ian very domineering and bullying and she would phone up and say that she wanted to get out of there. It's very difficult because you don't know whether it's a dementia or, or that's really happening but I had more and more concerns. So one of the problems with reporting cases of elder abuse is that quite often the victims aren't believed. Now this is a particular problem if the older person has dementia. Quite often they speak up or claim that someone has been stealing from them. There's a perception that they're confused or just getting a lot of muddle. If you know something's wrong, but you don't know what to do about it, you're completely lost. By that time I think Ian had decided that he was in charge of everything. Mum had a lovely gallery of family That's photos. That's a from Tours' close up. And one time when we went up, all the photos had gone, Ian had taken them all down, so she was just an inconvenience, I think. That's awful. Patricia is about to discover the full extent of her brother's betrayal. So some of the warning signs for financial abuse against an older person might be sudden unexplained ability to pay bills, to pay for shopping and basic necessities. We've been up for one of mum's care reviews. One of the care managers took me aside and said that the care bills weren't being paid. Ian had power of attorney by this time. I could work out what was going on. Everyone talks about online scams, but the sad reality is that your own family are just as likely to steal from you. Eighteen-year-old Claire Sproston has been told by her dad Nigel that she will have to wait until she is 21 to get her £13,000 inheritance. At the time, and not long in there, we were in a, a tiny one-bedroom flat. We were scraping by on what we had. That really could have helped Claire a huge amount. I could have had some savings for my son. It really made a huge difference to our lives. Determined to make the best of things, Claire settles into life as a young woman. So I looked for Facebook and I found my cousin and she asked me, I bet your boy's been spoiled with your money. So I explained to her, I said, well, well, my dad said he's changed the age when I was 21. She was like, you can't do that, you know, you were supposed to get the money when you were 18. She gave me the names of sisters, we got an appointment, went to see them, and I was sat in the room and a woman came over to me and I kind of feel like she was looking at me as if I was trying to con them for more money. Because she, she said to me, oh, you've had your money. I said, no, I haven't. I, I haven't had a penny. She said, yes, you have. It, it was signed over when you were 18. Claire assumes the only other person who could access her trust fund is her dad. At first, I still thought to myself, well, oh, perhaps there's a misunderstanding, there's a mistake here. I, I was still in denial as well. I, I still couldn't believe my dad would do that. Um, so she, she showed me, you know, signatures, and I was like, but that's not my signature. She said, oh, well, you signed for it. We've spoken to one film. I said, I've never spoken to in my life. And she said, oh, he's gone into a MacWest bank account. I said, I haven't got a bank account. I, I didn't get a bank account until about two years ago. It was very confusing and scary, and I didn't know what was going on. I went to the police station, told them everything I knew. They advised going to the bank. So I went to the bank to try and get the account closed, hoping and praying that there was still some money left in there. 
and if I could get the account frozen, I could still get some of my inheritance. But they told me that that well, account was frozen. Across to you. After that, I had my suspicions that my dad and stepmother were involved. I, I couldn't think of anyone else who could, who could do that. The police investigate, and Claire's worst fears are confirmed. I found out that my band stepmother opened a bank account in my name, forging signatures. I saw the paper that had been signed by Claire, apparently, and it was my stepmother's signature. She basically changed the J to a C. She didn't even try to forge Claire's signature, she wrote her own signature. With the evidence mounting, the sisters are starting to come to terms with what their dad and Jane I think it's appalling how he had the audacity to come to the hospital, hold his grandson, and then go ahead and steal the money from my sister anyway. He sees his daughter, and the fact that she's in an adult relationship, she has got a child, and that may feel very much like he's going to lose his daughter. That could be devastating. If you're going to abandon me, then I need something to, to make up for that. And, and what might make up for that is, well, okay, maybe I can pay the bills. Nigel and Jane have quickly burned through Claire's inheritance. They start drawing out 250 a day. As soon as the account was empty, they closed it down. Claire's entire 13,000 pounds is gone. My dad pleaded guilty to it all, took the blame for it, but my stepmother pleaded not guilty, put all the blame on my dad, said it was all him, she had no involvement. When he was pleading guilty and trying to cover up for Jane, I thought, you know, he, he was just as bad as her. Anyone who, who could do that is an idiot. Honestly, he's an idiot for trying to take the flat for someone who wouldn't do the same for him. No way. One of these contestants will go home and protect the group. So we order a takeaway. Can somebody say just me? Thanks. Enter the world of Dixon. 